Here is a quick video on how to do the math ask question where they give you whether the sine is positive or negative on the sine and cosine function and you're supposed to tell what quadrant you're in. So still this is a, not a video that tells you why the results come out the way they are but just a way to memorize the results. So for example it turns out in quadrant one all three trig functions are positive so I'd like to know all of them are positive here. In quadrant two turns out the sine function is positive but the other two are negative. So when I was a student, I had a high school teacher that told me to memorize all students take calculus and then label each quadrant moving counterclockwise using those letters. So here's the A for all students, here's S, T for take, and C for calculus. So we have all students take calculus, allowing me to label each quadrant, the A, the S, the T, and the C, and this is to remind me which trig functions are positive. So for example, the A stands for all, and all three are positive in the quadrant one. The S in all students take calculus is supposed to be for the sine function. Notice the sine function is positive, and if it's positive, it means the other two are negative. The T in all students take calculus stands for the tangent function. Notice the tangent function is positive in quadrant three, meaning the other two are negative. And then finally, the C in all students take calculus, this D stands for the cosine function, which is the only function that is positive of those three in quadrant four. And if it's positive, it means the other two are negative. By the way, you could also figure out the reciprocal trig functions as well, because when you reciprocate a fraction, uh, the sign on the fraction is preserved. So for example, the reciprocal of tangent is cotangent. So if the tangent's positive, the cotangent would also be uh, positive. Over here, you got the tangent being negative. So its reciprocal trig function cotangent would also be negative. So hopefully this helps you. For example, I want a quadrant where the sine is negative and the cosine is negative. Well, if the sine and cosine are negative, that means I'm looking for a quadrant where tangent would be po the one that's positive. So which quadrant has tangent being positive? Quadrant 3. So I would just say quadrant 3 by using, uh, I guess, a Roman numeral, you know, capital I, uh, three times. Uh, the second question says, where is sine positive, cosine is negative? Well, um, there's two quadrants where sine is positive, but one, uh, quadrant one, sine is positive, but all of them are positive there, so that can't be where they want it because they want cosine to be negative. So if I want sine to be positive and the other one's negative, that would be the quadrant I labeled S, where the sine is positive and cosine is negative. So that means we are in quadrant two. Uh, finally here, I guess not finally, but the third question, sine's positive, cosine's positive. Well, if they're both positive, you only have one quadrant where both are positive, and that would be quadrant one. And then now I can say, finally, I want sine to be negative, cosine positive. So if cosine's positive, you're either in quadrant one or four. But if I was in quadrant one, the sine would be positive, and they don't want that. They want the sine to be negative and cosine positive, so we must be in quadrant four where the cosine is positive. How do I know that? Because of the C's there. And if the cosine is positive in quadrant four, that means the other two would be negative, and that's exactly what they want. They want the sine to be negative. So we are definitely in quadrant four.